Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about this lovely beauty. This is uh, Excalibur by CB Swords. Um, general impression overall. Pretty cool sword. Uh, I do like it. Um, I definitely have some issues with it. So let's get into it. Uh, overall, it's, uh, it's 40 and a quarter inches long. Uh, it's got a 29 and a half inch blade. So it's, a, I'd say, a decent size overall. I'm pretty happy with the size. Um, eight and a half inches wide, and the blade itself is uh, two and three eighths wide. So that's, you can't tell from the video, super, super wide blade there. Um, it doesn't taper that much, so at the tip, it's, it's still almost two inches wide down there. So really broad blade. Uh, this thing is a hefty sword. It's uh, roughly four and a half pounds. Couldn't get the exact weight, but roughly four and a half. So uh, quite heavy for its size for a uh, 40 inch sword. Um, just to, as a reference, if you take your average kind of medieval sword that's 40-ish inches, they're going to be uh, two and a half pounds or so, somewhere around there. So uh, almost double that. Heavy sword. Um, it's technically made with uh, what they're calling a Damascus steel. Um, of course, uh, if you're watching a review like this, you're probably well aware of the issue around calling stuff Damascus that some people have with calling uh, blades like this, steel like this, Damascus. Uh, so I'll get into that later, but it's a, a carbon uh, Damascus steel. Uh, the hilt and pommel uh, are uh, going to be casts, cast steel. Uh, they seem to be, I, w I would say it's probably a poor or quality cast steel. It doesn't seem like the same kind of casting you'd have uh, from like the Dark Sword uh, or Albion, any of them, it seems like it's a, a more, uh, not as good a quality cast. Um, but yeah, at least they're steel, cast steel. Um, this one's got a, a, a fake glass or glass or plastic crystal on the end there. Give you a good close up too. Um, yeah. The runes on the blade, pretty cool. So overall, it's a good, good sword. Um, just some issues with it here. So general impressions on this guy, uh, it's just okay. I think that it's just, I give it an okay kind of sword. Um, it's heavier than it should be, I think. Said so that almost four and a half pounds. It's, it's a heavy 40 inch sword. Um, at least everything's tight though. Uh, if you give you a zoom in of like the, the hilt there, I'm all about the hilt tolerances, the tightness there. To me, that's a evidence of a good uh, forger, a good sword swordsmith. Um, but this is good and tight. But why is this tight? It's because it's uh, it's cast, uh, ma totally machine produced, so they could make those tolerances as tight as they wanted to. So they made it good and tight, but it's because it's totally machine done. So uh, I don't think there's anything about this sword that's handmade. Um, doesn't mean it's a bad sword, but yeah, it's definitely a, a mass-produced uh, Damascus steel sword. Um, let's see, hill construction said it's it's decent. The tolerances are tight. Uh, not thrilled with the steel. The leather they use it is real leather, so that's cool. Um, they use two different types of leather, one underneath and then wrapped with this other leather. Um, not bad. Uh, at least it's real leather. I'm not impressed with uh, the quality of leather they used. It, it almost looks like a vinyl, but it's not. It's leather. So why, uh, why use leather if you're going to make it look like um, vinyl? So I'm not thrilled with that, but at least it held true to uh, the general idea of the, the movie sort. Um, so the blade itself, it's, uh, yeah, it's not tapered enough. It's, so it's really wide and it doesn't taper much. Just about um, three quarters of an inch of a, of a taper along the whole way. Uh, if you're going to start this, this wide, I mean, you've got to have a much better taper than that. It's way too wide down here at the tip. Uh, so uh, back to the Damascus steel then. Uh, so I touched on it before, but this is Damascus steel. So what the uh, what the issue with that is people talk about whenever whenever there's a sword being sold saying it's damascus steel people talk uh, get into this debate of well damascus steel has long been forgotten uh, the process how to make it for hundreds of years and uh so that's the whole debate of okay can you actually call something damascus steel anymore or is it a forgotten art and you therefore can't call something damascus steel so two 
angles to that that I'd like to touch on just briefly. Um, a, in, in the common world these days, I'm okay with people calling steel Damascus steel in that it just means it's a pattern welded steel, um, that it's, it's a pattern welded layered steel that got compressed under heat, um, heat welding it and turning it into uh, you know hundreds of layers into one piece of steel. That's, that's the modern version of Damascus. Um, again, people have issues with that, that it's not quite right. And it, yeah, it, it's true to some capacity. Um, the exact mineral composition that went into the, the actual Damascus back in the day isn't, uh, isn't going to be the same, basically. That's, that's what they're talking about, the minerals that were uh, pulled from the ground, ground to make that original Damascus steel uh, are, haven't exactly been able to be replicated. So even though you can make a good pattern welded steel like this, a modern, modern uh, layered steel, um, some argue that it, it cannot be called Damascus. Um, the other angle of it is uh, some modern, modern uh, forgers have insist that they have reproduced Damascus accurately now. So uh, if you take that angle of it, then it's just uh, it's another way of saying, another angle that suggests that yes, uh, Damascus is very real these days and has been replicated. Um, would this be that very, very real Damascus? No, they wouldn't have done that with this. Um, but is this Damascus in the way that it is? Uh, pattern welded layered steel, then yes, this is uh, modern Damascus, which is cool. Um, the, another angle of that third point is you can have, even if it is this modern uh, pattern welded steel like this, doesn't mean it's good steel at all. You can make super, super cheap Damascus steel that on, that sells on a $100 sword, $50 sword. Uh, they're out there. It, the, the steel is garbage. Um, so just because it says Damascus does not mean it's uh, worth any good. Uh, you can also have a modern Damascus steel that's super, super good. Um, just as good, if not better, than most of your uh, average high carbon steels, even spring steels. So, um, just, just look into it further if you're looking at a store that says it's Damascus steel. Uh, okay, is it, is it a good Damascus or a cheap Damascus? Um, so yeah, just, just look into it further. I said this Damascus, uh, it's, it's fine. Um, I did not sharpen the sword. It comes dull. I didn't sharpen it, so I can't attest to the edge retention of this steel that they used. Um, all I do know is it has a decent spring to it. You can bend it and it comes back. Uh, it's a really thick, stiff blade, so it's hard to even put a, uh, too much of a bend on it, but it does return to its shape, so I'd like to believe it's a pretty good steel. Um, just from handling it so much, uh, the blade has rusted a bit over the years, um, so it is evidence that it is a decent, decently high carbon content to the blade, so uh, another reason why it's it's pretty good overall. Um, it, is, it is Damascus, and it is high carbon, so... Uh, there you go. But again, it, it, it is dull. Um, they didn't make any attempt to sharpen it. So if you get this sword and you want to, uh, you want it to be sharp, they do not offer that. You have to bring it somewhere to have somebody else do it. Um, there is no scabbard available for this. Uh, I have an issue with that because the scabbard from the movie is uh, pretty cool. It, uh, it's just a unique scabbard. It didn't exist too much in, in real life, but in the movie, it's a, it's a really unique scabbard that I like a lot. Um, and if I can take a step back, what I did not touch on at the beginning of this video is, uh, this is from the movie uh, Excalibur Legend of the Sword, uh, King Arthur Legend of the Sword, and uh, came out, what, 2018, I think, roughly, two years ago-ish, um, an amazing movie, I think one of the uh, best modern medieval movies uh, to be had out there, I think they did an incredible job making it, but anyway, um, they came out with this sword, it was supposed to be uh, modeled after the sword in the movie. It is a pretty good copy, um, but uh, they're, they do have some issues with that, and I'll, I'll get into that in a, uh, in a minute. Um, so anyway, scabbard, none available. Uh, I'll show you another one in a bit that I, I made that does a decent job, but uh, no commercial scabbards available for this guy. So my big issues with this, it's too heavy. I already touched on that. Uh, about four and a half pounds needs to be again closer to three. Uh, three pounds would be good for something like this. It's just too heavy. Um, the design. 
I have a big issue with the design. So again, this was modeled after the movie sword. Uh, so why stray so far from what they use in the movie to make this sword? Uh, you know, as a company, CB Swords, they had the resources to do it correctly. So why skimp or why stray so far from the, the movie sword? Um, I actually <laughs> emailed them and talked to them about that because I was just really confused why make it so different. So the story was that they, uh, when they started producing the sword was before they even, um, or before when they got the contract to make the sword for the movie, for to, to resell after the movie, uh, they didn't know exactly what the actual movie sword was going to be, uh, look like in the end. Uh, they had uh, ideas and rough sketches, but they didn't have the exact version that was being used in the movie. So using the sketches and information that they had, they, uh, made this guy. And by the time the movie sword actually came out, it was too late to go back and change this to be a, a more accurate representation of the movie sword. So uh, I give them some credit for that explanation. It makes a little sense why it's so different than how we'd like it to be. Um, but at least it's, it's fairly close uh, to what it should be. So um, to show you a little difference, I've got this sword here in its scabbard. This sword is by a UK company uh, called Arms of Chivalry. Uh, they were they were doing well. They were putting out some good products. Uh, greatly, this sword, and they've uh, it seems of late they've fallen by the wayside. I haven't heard or seen anything from them in a while. Um, but when they were crushing it, they came out with this sword, and I am super impressed with this sword. A, it's uh, I made this awesome scabbard for it, so it's quite uh, authentic to the movie. But if you take it out of the scabbard. You've got this puppy here. Um, this is almost an exact copy of what we would have liked to have seen uh, the CV Sword version be like. So when I saw that this existed, I, I jumped on it real quick and got it. Um, I actually modified it already, took the, uh, some, that, that wrapping. It had a similar wrap uh, to this on it. I took that off. Um, haven't redone it yet. But uh, yeah, they used a, a good, good brass for the hilt and pommel on that. Um, that's a really good high carbon steel blade, um, good good tang on it all the way through. So yeah, that, that's a beautiful sword. You can see that whole thing. Beautiful, really well done. Said it's just over two pounds, um, perfectly balanced. Everything about this is amazing. Uh, very very functional sword. So um, arms of chivalry. Again, I wish they kept this going. Uh, I'm not sure what happened because it's the only one I know of in existence um, on the market. Was the one that they were producing. So, uh, compared to that, yeah, this one's definitely uh, a little off. Um, so, anyway, uh, in summary, in conclusion on this, overall rating, I'm going to give this guy a 5 out of 10. So, that's pretty low in my book for any sword that I'm going to be reviewing, any sword that's technically uh, functional. And this definitely wavers on the line of functional. Um, I only buy swords that are at least high carbon steel. Um, hopefully somewhat functional. I don't buy any that are uh, the um, just the stainless steel blades. As cool as they look, I don't, I don't do it. So this one was right on the border in that, yeah, it was a, a high carbon blade, um, but the hilt construction, the whole thing, it's, it, the unwieldiness of the weight, it's, it's borderline uh, if it could actually be used. So um, I took one point off for the weight, too heavy. Uh, I took two points off for the design. Um, if this was just to be any sword not based on anything, cool, but it's not. It's based on that uh, Legend of the Sword movie sword, and uh, yeah, it's just not close enough to that. They, the movie one, as you saw, it's super cool looking. This, it's, uh, they just strain a little bit too much. Um, on that, these runes on here, uh, if you get the cheaper version of this sword, they, they came out with two versions. They did come out with the stainless steel version, they came out with this Damascus version. If you, uh, if you get the stainless steel version, these are engraved in the blade, which is pretty sweet. For some reason on this Damascus version, they just uh, printed them on there with some kind of, uh, yeah, they're just printed on there. So almost like a sticker or a decal. It, it does, it is on there really well. Um, almost like it's etched in. It could be like burned on some sort, but either way, it's not etched into the blade really. So uh, yeah, like why, why? You did that with the cheap sword, the stainless steel version. Why not do that with this guy? Who knows? Uh, I haven't been able to get any answer on that, but. Um, yeah, design. Two points off for that. They just strayed too far from uh, the real one. Uh, 
one point off for price, so uh, I didn't really hit on it. The stainless steel version is $250 from CV Swords. This guy is $600 from CV, CV Swords, so you're getting the exact same uh, handle parts. They're only swapping out the blade for an additional $350. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Again, this, this blade isn't that impressive, so if it was a, a um, better quality Damascus, if this was engraved, if the blade design was better, maybe if it was accompanied by uh, hilt parts that were of better construction, then yeah, sure, I'm, I'm willing to pay that price. Uh, but 600 for what you're getting here, uh, obviously I bought it, but uh, I think it's a little, it should have been closer to the $400 range, I think, maybe, maybe, maybe 500 but that would be pushing it. Um, so yeah, my last point, that I took off one point for the handle uh, construction and material. Um, again, I'm real disappointed that they used a, uh, the steel that they used, the, this cast steel that's not uh, a very good cast, it seems. You can't really see a seam that well, so that looks good, um, but it's just not, a, not that good of a steel. And that the leather, real leather, but it looks like vinyl pretty much. So again, why use uh, leather if you're gonna make it look like vinyl? So yeah, five points all overall, five out of 10. Um, is this sword worth the money? I always ask that with any of these reviews. So, it's at $600. Um, uh, if you love the movie as much as I do, and you had to have the sword uh, from the movie, then, uh, yeah, I think probably worth every penny. Uh, I'm glad I bought it, because it's, uh, it's my all-time, new all-time favorite movie. And uh, I, when I heard that they were releasing a Damascus version of the sword, had to have it. Um, I wasn't going to buy the stainless steel because I said no matter how cool the sword, I don't buy stainless steel. But this guy had to do it. Uh, it's kind of like uh, the Glam Dream Museum Collection uh, Glam Dream, you know, United you know, Cutlery. Um, you know, they released that. Yeah, that the handle parts are debatable how strong they are, but the blade is actually a decent uh, carbon steel. So again, had to have it. So same thing with this, had to have it. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, is it worth the money if you could be unbiasedly look at this thing? Probably not. No. <laughs> so, uh, the other big question I talk about with every sword is, would I take this into battle and trust it? Uh, no, I would not take this guy into battle and trust it. Um, and why was that stuff I touched on? It's too big and unwieldy. Um, the balance point's probably probably half a foot down this blade. It's, uh, not the, it, it's too far out on the blade. The blade is way too big and heavy. Um, and yeah, it doesn't come sharp. You could sharpen it, but uh, with the unwieldiness of the blade, uh, which throws off the, the weight of the whole sword, combined with the potentially cheap handle construction, uh, this, I would not take this into battle, even if I sharpened it. Um, would I give it to a, uh, a bad friend, maybe? You know, sharpened, and you know, here you go. Here's your, here's your battle sword. Yeah, it, it might hold up okay, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wouldn't want to trust it against uh, some other swords. So that's all I have to say for this guy. Uh, thank you so much for joining me again. Um, please leave your comments and questions down below. If you have said, if you have other, other swords you want reviewed, uh, questions you have on swords I've, you've seen already from me or other swords I might have, swords you're interested in, please post them and uh, we'll do our best to uh, get back to you on those. Thank you.